Welcome to Remolations. We're your hosts. I'm Mindy. And I'm Brooke. Remolations is a dream interpretation podcast where we read listeners' dreams from nightmares to the just plain bizarre. Join us as we give you our comedic interpretation of your fucked up REM cycle. Today, I'm reading a dream from our bestie Gina about job interviews, lesbians, and serial killers. We also have a handful of catnaps that have to do with hiding cannabis, <laughs> wood chippers in living rooms, Ooh. poison apples, <laughs> and avalanches. Ouch. And stick around because I'm also talking about precognitive dreams. And did President Lincoln have a dream of his assassination? Oh. Stay tuned. Intrigue. All right, bestie, put on your top hat and let's <laughs> get started. Is that bad taste? No, I love it. Let's get started. No! <laughs> I mean, he has been dead. It's okay. I think it's... He has I, been dead for like over... A hundred... You know, 150... Uh, 200 years. years. Yeah, I think, I think he'd, he'd be okay with it. He'd be no, okay. not 200, but 100 plus years he's been dead. It's okay. Yeah, a good, good amount of time. Good he's, amount he's not time. rolling over in that grave. No. Hey there, bestie. What's going on today? Howdy. Howdy ho. <laughs> I'm good. Hi. How are you? When did you become from the South, like a farmer <laughs> John's daughter? Oh. From the- Howdy ho. Just today. <laughs> I'm Brookie. I'm here to read some dreams. Howdy hi. Howdy. Howdy, howdy. howdy ho. <laughs> Let's get started with some dreams. Do you have one to share with us today? Yes, I have a dream, and it's from our bestie, Gina. What? Woo-hoo. I know, excited, right? This is, it's short but sweet, and it's funny, so I, I'm happy she shared this one with us. Are you ready? Okay. Okay. I am ready and willing. <laughs> that doesn't sound good. No, Ready thank and you for- willing to listen. Good. That's better. That sounds a lot yeah. better. Okay. True. All right. <laughs> I work in healthcare. Recently, I served on a search committee for an open position at our hospital and had to interview some candidates with a couple other people. We interviewed four candidates and agreed that the superior choice was a young female. Since then, she and I have become friendly. But in my dream last night, we were interviewing her again. Someone asked why she left her old position to move to Phoenix. She replied quite matter-of-factly, I needed a new start. Because I was a serial killer. <laughs> um, hired. Hired. And that's number one of my checklist. Go down. Did, did you see that on LinkedIn? We were looking for someone Thank that you. Um, likes to kill people and is a self-starter. And just a very interesting background and history. Yes. Just an ex- mm-hmm. expert on life and death. <laughs> the more experience, the better. <laughs> That's what you want, right? Yeah. (laughs) So we all appreciated her honesty (laughs) and the fact that she had apparently overcome being a serial killer. (laughs) Good job. That's one of the hardest things I've heard to overcome is serial killing. Yeah, I... Yeah, most people would kind of it would kind of follow you around. You'd think for the rest of your life, but yeah, no, I'm I'm glad she kicked the habit. You know, today I just don't feel like killing anymore. No. I'm, she, I'm not. I'm good. The, it's I'm the good. first step. The first step is recognizing there's a problem. Is it admitting you have a problem? <laughs> yes. After that, she and I were texting. I realized I had feelings for her. And then Gina says, here I go oh, again ooh. with my lesbian dream tendencies. <laughs> <laughs> I asked her a bunch of questions via text, including whether she spits or swallows. Oh, <laughs> How that would apply to me not having a penis, I'm not sure. (laughs) (laughs) Well, you could tell a lot about a person. I think that should have been on the resume as well. Right. I mean, spit or swallow, you just got to know. Either way, those are like just the basics that you look for. I mean, those are just the basics. Mm -hmm. We shouldn't have to be telling people this. Those are interview. (laughs) No, no. Simple interview questions. Questions. (laughs) I'm sorry. That one got me because she's like, I don't have a penis. (laughs) Eventually, during our text conversation, I started to realize how fucked up it was that we were disregarding the fact that she had previously been a serial killer. Good. Mm, I'm mm -hmm. glad. Yeah. 
Put the, put those blinders on, Gina, just <laughs> right over your eyes. But she's like, okay, well, how can she even keep her medical license with that history, I wonder? <laughs> That's a good question. Good question, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I decided that even though I was crushing on her at this point, <laughs> I was going to go back to the committee and give my new opinion, even though mm. our part in the interview process and hiring process was officially over. But before I could do so, I woke up. Oh, can you imagine going back? You know, like you're trying to do the right thing. And then- Betty's a really good. She mm. fills this position really well, mm-hmm. but you know, there's just a couple red flags. One, serial killer. Yeah. Two, I have a crush on a serial killer. <laughs> I don't want that to continue. And I don't want to mess up, you know, the office romance relation. You know, it's not good. It's, that, yeah, that's not good. It's always I mean, it worked out for me. Yeah, Mark, I was going to say, what, know, what are you talking about? <laughs> it seems like a pretty happy ending for you. That it was. <laughs> it doesn't always work out for everyone. I can imagine it would get very sticky if, if it did ew. It work out. But, ew. <laughs> that would be a spit then, I guess. <laughs> You're going to have to lower that one. I saw it go red. (laughs) You're on fire today, my friend. Really? (laughs) You cracked me up. Wow. Okay. Okay. (laughs) I do find it interesting that Gina works in healthcare. You know, that's like a huge responsibility. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, always working hard. Like your job is to take care of people. But, you know, that's our Gina. (laughs) She has, I feel like, so much genuine care and compassion in her heart just from you know interacting with the show and everything so i think that she's got a great heart and that i'm not sure yes. what the issue is but here's what i think i think it's interesting cuz being in healthcare is a stressful job we mm-hmm. all know that yep. especially over the last few years as covid hit budgets get cut mm-hmm. and you know cuz you're kind of in that field working yep. with people and it's such a high stress job day to day that it makes sense that her dreams are so vivid at night. Right. Now, Gina's one of our besties and she's been a fan of the show for a long time and she submits her dreams practically weekly yeah. and we love them and we can't share. We can't make it the Gina show, which I wish we could. But we can't. Sorry, Gina. But we do like to share some of them every so often. Yeah. But it does make sense to me why that in a day to day stressful environment you that dream at night it. you're um, it just goes wild mm-hmm. and she just going wild with this one Woo! she she definitely has an imagination on her which is what we love but yeah so that's just kind of the background i mean i know we got that in the dream but i'm glad we kind of shared a little bit about gina too you know because she mm-hmm. is such a sweet woman um so there's the interview process which i feel like is always a power Ugh. thing you know it just sucks it just sucks, but there's not really a struggle here either. Everyone agreed on the same candidate, you know, and everyone seems to be on the same page. So again, there's not really so much an obvious struggle uh, yeah. yet. <laughs> yeah, yet. Yeah, until we find out about this young woman. <laughs> now, it's been a while since I've been on an interview uh, because I work for myself. I've worked for myself. I've had my photography business for a long time nine years now so it's been a long time since i've been in the corporate world good for you good for you you. (laughs) let me ask this if you are a hiring manager Mm -hmm. what is the one question you would ask a potential employee like or what's the best question you've ever had asked you i had a weird question how about that because i'll go with that sure most of my interviews I hate interviews. They're just, I feel like the interview process is very generic because you have your Mm -hmm. resume and a cover letter. You've basically praised yourself to get in the door. You've told them everything. (laughs) To get in one page. Everything about your life in one page. So it's like they know everything. And I hate when you just have to repeat it. But if they ask for specific examples, fine. But I just feel like it's like, where do you want to see yourself in five, ten years? You know, it's always like, what are the top three, you know, this and that? And it's like, I can't. I can't do it. But my favorite interviews and the ones I've been uh, or the jobs and teams I've been on that have been the most successful, it's more of a conversational interview. By the time you get to the interview Mm -hmm. process, it should be more of a personality. Is this a good fit for the team, for the company? Mm Because you've read everything before. So that's what I think the interview process should be. 
But, okay, let me think of the weird question how it was. Because it wasn't that long ago, but it was something like, okay, imagine next to me is a suitcase and it's like this high. And he just kind of like shows me with his hand. <laughs> oh, okay. That Okay, that's already a weird start to ask. Yeah. Um, I'm glad I wasn't alone in the room. <laughs> there was three people interviewing <laughs> me. So, um, yeah, weird. And then... Something like, how many jelly beans can you fit in it? Or something like that. It was like, what? Like, I'm what? sure I could not hold my surprise when they asked me that question because is- I never had anything weird like that. And I just said, is this 10th grade geometry? I just I don't know. I'm like, what are we supposed uh... to answer here? Like a real answer? What are you supposed to be like? What they want to know what your see, thought that's process. Way too deep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, they want to see yeah. your thought mm-hmm. process. And I just went, all oh, right, what was it? Oh, how many jelly beans can you fit? And why are you traveling with them? Or where are you going? Something like that. Oh, so there was a follow up? Yeah, it was one quite I mean, it was like, in the same sentence, I forgot about the like, where are you going or yeah. what are you doing with them? And so he's like, How many do you think? And I'm like, A lot. <laughs> like, I'm assuming you blunt a lot. It's a, it's a lot of jelly beans, more than the Easter bunny can carry. <laughs> and he was like, Well, why are you bringing them? I'm like, Because where you're going, they don't have jelly beans. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you going? To do- That's a great answer. The question is, did you did you get the job? I did not. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess your answer is wrong. You're- I guess that was the wrong answer. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. Mm, it's really funny. Um, how about you? I know it's been a near decade since you probably had some interview questions or maybe you've worked with people that have in- had interesting questions for you. So I, I though I don't have like real interview experience lately we do kind of interview with each of our couples to yeah, decide if they course. want to book us for their wedding photography so it's kind of like an interview right every, it is yeah every time we meet you, with a yeah. couple and the one i uh, always <laughs> enjoy getting is what happens if you die before our wedding i'm like oh what? that's morbid but you've had that more than we've once? gotten it more than once <laughs> yes now most times they'll ask like what if you can't make it but <laughs> What if you die? And it's been more than once. What That's if your venue so- burns down? What if there's what if your no DJ flowers that year? What explodes? if explodes? <laughs> <laughs> That's always nice to to hear. I'm like, well, I won't be there. You're like, I guess if <laughs> I die, simple. um, I won't be there. Sorry. <laughs> Maybe Mark can do it. Sorry about that. <laughs> Yeah, it's just as long as it's like, you know, not while he's planning the funeral, we'll work right. something out. Yeah, he'll be like, Mindy would want it this way. <laughs> Mindy will have yeah, a... Yeah, get back to a, work. Mindy will have a post-humorous checklist <laughs> for everyone doing yeah, I will. <laughs> you know, I will. I do, I do have one of those files that are in case I die files. Everyone should get them. Anyways, we're on a tangent. So <laughs> We really got so. off on a tangent there, huh? But let's talk <laughs> about the lesbian themes in Gina's dreams, maybe just for a second. Yes. There's okay. lots of interesting meanings if <laughs> lesbians in your dream, which I find very odd that that would be a big symbol, but very, very similar reasons, I guess you could say, but they kind of fit with the rest of the story, surprisingly. Like, dreaming of a lesbian okay. can symbol that you want to be more honest with your thoughts and emotions. And I'm like, okay, well, she's trying to be really honest at the end of the dream. And it's kind of Mm -hmm. the only struggle. Well, she has a couple struggles, the romance part and the the (laughs) serial killing part. Serial killer part, yeah. Mm -hmm. Those are some troubles. A lesbian can also be a lucky person to interact with in a dream. It represents development and achievement in your working life. And that really fascinated me, too, because I'm like, okay, it's about her work as well. About the idea of dreaming in a, of a sexual situation of which you're not orientated, mm-hmm. I think is interesting. And I think it happens a lot more commonly than people expect or want to admit. At least, Gina, right, you're like, admitting this is the dream I had. I am, And who cares? I'm not, I'm not a lesbian, but I had a dream about it. I think it happens more often than not. I've had interesting dreams about females as well. Yeah. But... I think it does lead itself to a side of you that wants to explore something, right? Yeah. It's it's and kind it's of taboo. Safe. It's something like, it's not what I would do in my waking life, but it's an exploration of something in your life. Yep, I agree. And I did read a little bit on what a lesbian means in a dream if 
it said if you're not a lesbian and you're attracted to a lesbian in a dream or, you know, something along those mm-hmm. lines. And it also said it was a confidence thing that mm-hmm. you do feel good about yourself um, and you're confident, which I feel like Gina is very open and mm-hmm. shares and is confident. And then it could also mean, though, that you have dominance over another person. Ooh, so maybe there is a okay. person in her life. Does she have a crush in real life and is she struggling whether to do something about it or maybe that person she yeah. really loves is maybe it's not the best choice so she's really struggling whether she should pursue it or mm. not, you know. So I guess the only other topic would be murder. Either way, I mean, I say don't date a serial killer. I think no. that... Bad is a no go. The the reddest flag that ever <laughs> flew was that one. And I understand. It's blood red. I understand. <laughs> oh my god! I didn't even realize how funny that was until I. Saw it. <laughs> I just think of a color of red. I love That's really how good. you're cracking up at yourself. <laughs> I didn't realize how funny I am. <laughs> That sounds so bad. You got to keep it. I didn't mean it. I just thought of a color. (laughs) Blood red. My apologies. Okay. So speaking of blood red, how about murder and serial killing? Mm, I mean, mm -hmm. I'm not exactly sure how Gene is involved in the healthcare system, but let's say murder is probably the opposite of the Hippocratic Oath. That right. doctors take. I mean, the first thing is do not harm. So mm-hmm. I I understand why Gina would wonder how this candidate would keep her medical credentials. Because mm-hmm. I yeah, feel like she, she really did miss the mark on that do not harm part. But then- maybe, maybe it is about her watching for the blood flags because... <laughs> the blood you flags! Know, <laughs> because... She liked this candidate a lot. A lot. And she was attracted to her and sexually texting. or in a physical way. Yeah, texting and crushing. But it was like the, the blood flag was flying. And <laughs> sometimes I... in your life, you have to recognize it's not just, it's not a light pink. No. It is a blood flag. And you have to not walk, but run away from that flag. And it is and so hard is when, it? when mm-hmm. there's feelings involved, right? It is hard mm-hmm. when there's, I mean, to look at... A, the true nature, the true negatives of a person that you're like kind of mm, like so hard. Yeah, especially in the beginning when yeah. everything yeah. that person couldn't do wrong, you know, like if you're crushing. And it could be a, a romantic relationship, but it can also be a friendship because sometimes friendships are nothing but trouble. not good and toxic. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So but I also find it interesting that everyone else was also willing to look past it. I mean, right. <laughs> Gina does come to her senses, thank God, and tries to finally address the seriousness of them hiring a serial killer. But mm-hmm. she, she couldn't make her mistake right. It was too late. And like I said, Gina's great. She's a great heart. But what is she stressed about besides work? You know, that we dream about work. But maybe she's not stressed. Mm-hmm. Like you said, maybe she's just having a dream. And there's just some work stuff, some personal stuff. And it's just like what you dream about. Maybe there's no symbolism here. Maybe it's, you know, just her making sure her moral compass is on path. And she's trying to do the right thing. Even if it's as serious as serial killing. She's still you know trying what, just- to do the right thing. Just run those background checks. I think it's very important when you hire someone. Yes. Um, sidebar, side story. Um, when we worked at, when I worked at the office with Mark, there was a new developer hired, a software developer, and this was the most incompetent HR team I have ever worked for. <laughs> Obviously, not a single background check because this guy had warrants out for his arrest for threatening a judge's life. A, ju- I a, guess, it- like a, a, a judge. I guess it really doesn't matter whose life you're threatening, but a judge? It's not yeah, not so good. Mm. And then, like, of course, all of us employees were like, this guy seems a little bit off. And so, like, all of my friends were, like, Googling his name. And we're like, oh, wow, it took, like, two pages on Google to find out what the, this guy is, like, wanted. Oh. And then one day, he just didn't show up for work. They got him. <laughs> I'm guessing they got him. They got him. But crazy. Crazy. Always wow. run your background checks. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Well, 
I don't know. Do you have any other thoughts on Miss Gina? I mean, that was kind of a <laughs> silly but serious dream. I, I think that was perfect. You did a great job. Thank you. Oh, Thanks, thank Gina, you, Gina, for sharing your dream. Hey, Bestie, if you haven't done it yet, head on over to remolations.com slash support. If you head on over there, you will see a lot of ways to support the show. Something as simple as sharing your dream, following us on social, or getting some cool ash, cool ash, cool <laughs> ass. You want those sw- cool ass? Get some cool ash, swag and merch. They come in ash. They come color. in ash. I will make sure this, that you they come in ash sure. before this comes out. <laughs> get it in ash and a blood red as well. Yes. You can get your merch, and you can also join our sleepover squad. And that's the fun part, guys. That's when you get to see the this behind the scenes craziness. videos of our episodes. So if you want to see our faces and laugh along with us, it's a great way to support the show. So again, that is remolations.com slash support. Excellent. Excellent. Mindy, guess what time it is? Ooh, ooh. It would be time for cat naps. Cat nap time. We love catnaps, you guys. This is part of our show where we kind of read shorter dreams so we can kind of get through a lot of people submitting their dreams. Maybe you have a dream story or maybe you just remember one sentence of your dream. It's catnap time. We want to hear it all. It's catnap time. And I've got one to start with. Let's hear it. I've got a dream here from Pete, and Pete is from San Jose, California. All right, Pete. I don't dream often, so this one threw me for a loop. Oh, no. So I dreamed a very vivid dream of mushrooms shooting out the corner of my left eye. Of course. (laughs) Just the left one, I guess. Just the left one. Well, I guess that's a blessing. He still could use the right one, I'm guessing. (laughs) They were white with a pink translucent cap. It seemed they were coming from inside my sinus cavity. So I started pulling them out through my nose. Ouch. Mushroom? (laughs) And then I woke up. (laughs) Oh, no. They're not the smallest of things. <laughs> weird. Just weird. More of a nightmare, really. Mm-hmm. Anywho. Does it mean anything? I rarely have dreams so vivid. Anywho. I love anywho. it. Thanks, Pete. Um, anywho, Pete. Uh, I don't know that that has anything. It could just be one of those dreams that are just Fucked weird. up. Maybe. Maybe you have a taste for mushrooms and you should get some on a pizza. Yep. Or a or- salad. <laughs> or go mushroom hunting. What do they call that? Morale. Um, is it morale? Morale hunting? Yes. Morale yes. hunting? Which I've never had because mm. I'm not the biggest mushroom fan. I've tolerated them the older I've gotten. But that is I, correct. Yes. As I've gotten older, I too have been able to tolerate them. I think it's more of a texture issue for me, like the squeaky. They can't be too squishy. Yeah. In, in my opinion. Uh, yeah. They but... can't be like canned mushrooms. They have to be like a little bit of firm. Yeah. I agree. But I definitely don't want them coming out of my eyeball. Mm-mm. Or nose. Or sinus cavity. Mm-mm. Neither one of those that sounds pleasant. <laughs> Thanks, All Pete. All right. Let's see here. All right. We'll go kind of in a little bit of a different direction here. This is Gregory, and he's from Colorado. I was snowboarding. It was the most perfect day. All conditions were amazing, and I was on the mountain for mm-hmm. hours. It was strange because I was completely. Sounds fun. I know. Well, I always thought I'd wanted to learn how to snowboard, but I would be terrible at it. I have the worst balance. I can of ski. Anybody like skiing? Fine. Snowboarding? I don't think I could pull it off. I don't think I'm good at skiing either. But I only did it twice as a kid, so <laughs> I can probably guarantee that I'm not good at skiing. I think like having like my two feet strapped to one thing is like a less control thing. I don't think I'd like. That is a I, yeah. You got your both legs separate when you're skiing. I understand that as opposed yes. to being like both your feet mm-hmm. hooked into this board. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Mm-hmm. Well, yep. fair, fair. The mountain was completely empty. It didn't make sense for such a perfect day, but I was too happy to care. Then it felt eerie. It completely changed. Completely. I felt nervous. I came to a stop just to breathe and take in the majesty of the mountain. Then I heard it. A crack. A rumble. The rest was slow motion. I don't know. I turned and saw the wall of snow spiraling towards me. No. Avalanche, yes. yes. I was swallowed yep. and tossed around like a rag doll into total blackness and suffocation. And then I woke up. 
Oh, it's terrible. Oh, terrible. Oh. But he said, I, even, "I don't." Well, it's like suffocation in cold. Mm-mm. Yeah, no, it's it's terrible all around. And if if you don't get like smashed into something and your body broken into a million pieces, like a uh, part of the right. mountain, then you get the lovely option of just suffocating. I mean, oh. <sighs> but he did Both say, which was interesting, that when he did wake up, he was completely tangled up in his blankets and like couldn't breathe like he had him so <laughs> tightly around him i'm like yeah, oh that tracks he was really that tracks tumbling yeah. around mm-hmm. there <laughs> well thanks gregory yikes and stay off the hills for yeah a while, um maybe. check the, the slopes check they're not called the, the hills they're called the slopes the hills. <laughs> check the hills stay off the hills <laughs> <laughs> oh that's funny the hills all right all right maybe do you have another one <laughs> I've got one from Leroy, and Leroy's from New York. Oh, I like the name Leroy. Nope, you don't that... hear that too often. Sorry, that's wrong. It's not Leroy. <laughs> Never mind. This is from because I realized I did have a name on this one, so I went to oh. use her name. <laughs> did you? This make one's up? from wait, Alana. Wait, wait a minute. No, here's did what I did. Her Leroy? name's Alana. She's from Leroy, New York. Oh. But I read it as the name was Leroy from New York, but this is Alana. <laughs> From Leroy, New York. Yeah, should have read that a little closer, Mindy. Should have read a little closer. Killing me. Okay. okay. <laughs> Alana says, "I had a really awful reoccurring dream when I was probably eight or nine years old. My parents went through a horrific divorce, and I was too young to understand the kind of person my father actually was. I remember the dream super vividly. I would walk into this crazy, bright, big room." And as I walked in, I noticed a huge, crazy machine with a chute on it. Hmm. It was an industrial wood chipper. Oh, no. I walked in on my mom, strapping my dad onto the belt that fed into the machine. Uh, Yeah, that's kind of terrifying for an eight or nine-year-old. Did she just lose it with the dad? Or was it really the mom who was the bad person all along? Mm-hmm. Well, she goes on to say, I would wake up as soon as the blood and guts would start pouring out of the end, <laughs> and I would always wake up hysterically crying. This lasted probably for two plus years, oh and I had God. to go to therapy for it. I am so sorry for laughing yes. now. I'm so sorry for laughing. I mean, I yeah, therapy would probably help that, <sighs> hopefully, did for you there, Alana. Could you imagine how vivid and horrifying? I mean, yes, it is a horrifying dream. But like you said, for a little child and to have that recurring, oh. Well, just to have enough of a a stressful, you know, contentious household during a divorce is hard enough. Right. But then the only way they knew how to manifest and deal with those memories and those thoughts was such a horrific way in in the stream. So, ah, yeah, Yeah. that's a a crazy one, Alana. Thanks, Leroy. Any... <laughs> Just Thanks, Leroy. Um, hopefully you're not having any more of those dreams anytime soon. Yes. Oh, God. Oh, that's terrible. I think I would lose it, too. Uh, moving along, do you have one for us? Yes. And this is Kravis. And yes, that's Kravis. I thought you'd be interested in that one. Hmm, I With like it. With a K. It. Yes. He's from Phoenix. And he says, back when I was a kid, I watched the movie Eight-Legged Freaks. It was a movie about huge spiders that overran the earth. It was the stuff of nightmares. Hmm. It was a, it was kind of is a comedy. That's why I can't watch Tremors. You don't like Tremors? Wasn't that the one with the, like the thing that lived in the ground? Yeah, like the yeah. Sand little snake. Uh uh-uh. uh. Yeah. Nope. Uh uh-uh. uh. That was like my childhood nightmare. Tremors I had movie. No Mm-mm. idea. That movie is one oh. of my favorites. Oh. We have very opposite Can't tastes in certain things, though. But that's why we're friends. Yes, we do. <laughs> we're so similar yep. yet so different. That's why it works. <laughs> but this it's was true. a silly, stupid, like, David Arquette movie. But you know what? As a kid, it's oh, okay. probably really freaky. Okay. Kravis says, I ran and fought off all types of spiders and ran through this huge cave trying to escape mm. from a jumping spider. Don't like that. Mm-mm. It's just like jumping behind <laughs> Jump- him. Oh, boing, boing, don't. I'm going to have a nightmare about that. Ooh, I don't want a spider like. No. no. Mm-hmm. <laughs> My friend got snatched by a smaller spider and the hero in me had to go save her. 
I kicked the creature off her and helped her up. We continued running through the cave, constantly followed by screeching sounds of arachnids Mm. uh, until we met our cave's end. Oh, no. (laughs) Hopefully, was it the open end or was it a closed end? Yeah, but a steep drop off. Oh. And he said, oh, his, the dirt was crumbling underneath his feet at the edge. Oh, of course. Oh, God, please uh, don't say that he woke up. Please I turned, don't say that he woke I, up. I turned back and saw the spider and pushed my comrades off the edge trying to get away. The others jumped off, but I got caught by a web and watched in horror as the spider sank its teeth into my belly. And oh, then I woke the belly? Up. Oh, of all places. Mm, the belly. Mm. That's a slow death. So that's any, a gut anywhere shot. in that. Mm-mm, Ooh, that's slow. Slow, death. slow and painful. Slow, mm-hmm. You can see it coming. You can yeah. just see them putting on their little like their little like bibs Bib. and getting their forks out. <laughs> spider bibs. They're just you're just they're spider bibs and you're just watching them. They're like, dinner time, ding and ding and ding. And then like oh. the mama one rings the little bell and everyone little, comes over and it's a every it's a buffet. comes over. That's terrible. Now there's I'm now I'm Gross. having such different images, but oh spiders. No, we have plenty Ew. of spider dreams, but yeah, I don't didn't like it. Didn't, didn't like that one. Didn't care for it. But thanks, Kravis. Thanks, Kravis. Nonetheless. This one is from Hannah. And she's from Springfield, Massachusetts. But she spells it H A N A. So I like it. Thank I you. I know you like it. Yes, mm-hmm. thank you. I do. <laughs> This one's called Fireworks, Undercover Agents, and a Tribe. <laughs> it's a good title. So it's a little bit longer, but I, but I wanted to share this today. So here we yeah. go. I dreamt I was at a local quarry with my boyfriend watching fireworks with a crowd of people. I kept trying to hide a bag of weed in my bra because I felt <laughs> there were <laughs> undercover agents everywhere. Oh, my goodness. If I had a nickel... For every time, every time I've been in that situation where the feds were after me. <laughs> Throw like, it's, that only, pot it's only a gram. <laughs> she goes, side note, I'm in recovery and I haven't smoked weed in a long time, so I definitely don't keep any weed in my bra. Well, good. <laughs> for her, not keeping the yes. weed in her bra. Yeah, And yeah, for being in recovery. Congrats. Yes. It didn't matter how hard I tried to hide this weed, I just couldn't because the bag made one boob look gigantic compared to the other. <laughs> Too bad she didn't have another baggie. She could have s- spread it out a little more. One Maybe even, side. right? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Two big lumps. <laughs> just a, a lopsided weed bra. A lopsided weed boobs. Weed boobs. Anyhow. Is that a new thing? Weed boobs. <laughs> weed boobs. It's like a whole it. new thing. I turned around to go to the bathroom and the landscape changed and the Mm. buildings that appeared didn't appear to belong. I walked into the first building and this woman tells me how obvious the bag is. So I put it in my underwear. (laughs) Thank God she wears bra and underwear (laughs) because these are her main carrying (laughs) utensils. I mean, it would make more sense to put it between your legs and a lopsided bra. So now we've got... Weed bra and weed underwear. Yeah. So. Yep. <laughs> Boy, she could probably make a killing with some like weird um, right? OnlyFans stuff. <laughs> with her <laughs> weed God. underwear and weed bra. <laughs> I walk outside and hear a female agent telling another agent that she's going to find my drugs because she knows I have them. Oof. I continue around the building and sit down at a picnic table. A tribe appears in front of me. They were wearing animal skins, and each had a different type of war paint on. Okay. I don't know if they were dressed in weed bras and weed underwear as well, or just just war paint. I would hope so, just for my own Yeah, because then she blends in a little bit more. she'll blend in. She'll be a little safer. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. They were chanting and dancing. I couldn't understand what they were saying, so I asked, what does this mean? The chief, I think he was the chief, Puts his hand over my eyes to close them. I felt my heart racing and a roar come to my stomach. Mm. With closed eyes, I could see a lioness that began roaring with me. I felt like I was chasing an animal, but as soon as they opened my eyes, I was sitting still looking at the tribe. Interesting. Deep. Yeah. I finally understood their chanting as if they were speaking English. And here's what they said. 
Eyes, mind, heart, soul. All is one, all is connected. Oh my God. My boyfriend touched my shoulder from behind and we had to leave. And the agents were still searching everyone for weed. We got in our car and then I woke up. It was one hell of a ride and I'm still confused. <laughs> yeah, I would from be too. Hannah. <laughs> Thanks, Hannah. Yeah, that, I, went, that went a lot of different ways. It sure did. Fun, fun party vibe. Yeah, so I just, liked you know, it. Get a little high to... And Not, nothing wrong with that. Tribal experiences. Yes. I mean, she had some pretty profound experiences in this short dream and really, really nice words, too. Like, I think I, we should put that. That, that should be saved somewhere. Is, yeah, let me say it again. Be, Eyes, mind, heart, soul. All is one. All is connected. I think really it's beautiful. beautiful. I know. Beautiful. And maybe because she is sober now that she's kind of more, we don't normally analyze these, but I'm just going to say mm, one thing. Yeah. Because it's hard not to on this one. Maybe it's that past life of hers that she, when she had her addiction and now she's seeing everything with new eyes, literally eyes closed, eyes open up and being able to view things in a different way. Yeah. A different, I think it was more a beautiful spiritual dream. way. It is. It is. Thank wow. you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. This is from Gabriel from Tampa. I love the name Gabriel. I know. It's it just I don't know. It's just like so pretty majestic. I yeah, I don't know. There's something fancy about it. Yeah, like I like it. Gabriel. Mm. Mm. <laughs> We're I, both like, mm. Mm. <laughs> let's see what kind of dream this Gabriel has and we'll tell you whether it's mm or not. Um All right. Well <laughs> okay. let's get started. We'll write your name based on your dream. Here we go. Right? <laughs> Lots of pressure, Gabriel. <laughs> no pressure. Lots I, of pressure. Okay. I ate the poison apple from Snow White, but it gave me powers instead of killing me or putting me into a coma. But it didn't give me any cool powers like a superhero. Oh. All I could do was reach the apples too high up in the trees for a normal person or ladder and then throw them at people. Oh. <laughs> and then I woke up. <laughs> I don't really see that as a power. I always see that more as a convenient thing to have and kind of mean. Kind of mean. mean. Depends yeah. on who you're throwing them at. <laughs> it's kind of Witches? mean. Witches? Fine. Witches, yep. They react to fruit. We know Serial killers? Episode. Yep. Good. Also fine. Mm -hmm. um, not kids, probably. Not kids, babies. not no nice babies. babies. No. no babies old or old people. people. <laughs> don't, throw them, don't throw apples at old people. Nope. I would find it hard to believe that this would be the power that someone would give. Because you know what? Ladders can be incredibly tall. <laughs> so but I then mean, you'd have to carry them around, Brooke. That's true. I mean. Thank God Gabriel can reach those really high apples. But Just think of the Wizard of Oz, you know? I mean, yeah. it would have been much probably more helpful to have Gabriel there for Dorothy. And he could true. help her with those evil trees. Maybe he was that evil tree. Oh, know? in a past Wizard life. Mm, wow. Maybe he rushed that before falling in bed. Hmm. Hmm. Things okay, to well, think about. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Gabriel. <laughs> I still nope. like the name. Yeah, I still give you a good grade. I like your name. <laughs> what a great bunch of catnaps. Thank you for everyone who submitted. Yes, thank you, thank you, thank you. Why is Quarry so funny, by the way? I feel Quar like... Quarry? Like, yes, because the word she was, Quarry? Yeah, well, no, just a Quarry in general. Like, it's used... Like, I can't tell you how many TV shows I've watched where, like, they're like, I spend my evenings going to the Quarry, and it's just so bizarre and so funny. Like, I don't know if it's the sound of the <laughs> word or the idea of, like, grown people just going to a Quarry at night to, like, throw rocks... But, hmm. Well, it's funny because when I grew up in like my first house until I was like six or seven, we lived by a quarry. <laughs> and I, at six or seven, would wander into the forest behind my house and go explore the quarry. And it's looking back, it's like one of those child of the 80s things. They didn't know where I was or what I was doing. And but I could have fallen to my death. I was going to say, quarry is a pretty dangerous place for anyone, let alone a little kid. Did you and, walking around by yourself? <laughs> Now I want to like look on Google Maps to see like if it was in my dreams, like it was really there or not. Oh, because you know how sometimes you have like memories that you think are memories, and you're like, maybe they're not real. Midi, you check know that out very well that I've had that, and recently because that's yes. what all my dreams have been recently is thinking I've had text oh, messages. You should wait. Save that for our okay. chit chat. Okay. Okay. Hey, Brooke. 
Do you know one of the most widely reported types of precognition is dream precognition? So, you know, if you think of precognition, it's like ESP Mm -hmm. or Mm -hmm. psychic. Precog. (laughs) Precog. You know know the old precog. I know the precogs. (laughs) But the most common type of precognition is dream precognition. Really? Oh, I love that. And I know we've shared some dreams before about precognition or what they call premonition dreams. Mm -hmm. We've never really touched on it too deeply. No, you're absolutely right. And we've had enough dreams that this is fascinating. I'm glad we're kind of diving in. And so this is kind of a start because there's a lot of people who claim to have precognitive dreams. Sure. And and this can kind of be a stepping stone to talk about more stories. So I'm going to start by talking a little bit about precognitive dreams in general. They've been reported throughout time in every culture and every belief system. I mean, if we go back to the Bible, we know there's plenty of stories in the Bible of of dreams of, I don't know, the the three wise men coming or (laughs) sheep, (laughs) Jesus being born, right? Wasn't that like a dream or an angel that came down? Anyhow, it could be a dream. It could be an angel. We're not sure. (laughs) We went to Catholic school for 12 years, but we're not sure. (laughs) You know, there's pharaohs, there's a burning bush. Somewhere along those lines, I mean, someone's I having can, a dream. I have certain things I remember. A <laughs> burning bush. <laughs> there was a boat once and a flood. I mean, I remember bits the of The sea these. parted. <laughs> Tablets. <laughs> Tablets. But not the electronic kind. The, no, no, no. The not kind. the kind. The Ten Commandment kind. <laughs> According to sleepfoundation.org, Humans dream for at least two hours a night, and anywhere between 17.8 and 38% of people have experienced at least one precognitive dream in their lifetime. I believe that. That's like one-third people that yeah. says, yeah, I've had a dream. And Yeah, at least right. one. You know, it doesn't mean you have to be a psychic and have, have these dreams all these times. But once, yeah, I believe that. So I talked about a precognitive dream I had. It must have been around episode 67, 68, where I had a dream that my niece was was pregnant. So I've had them. They've been throughout history. Mm-hmm. So let's get into a little bit. Okay. What qualifies a dream as a precognitive dream? So there's some criteria that's been set forth just okay. to kind of let's get let's get all on the same page here. Yeah. But you know, because it's just like anything, it's all relative because people can put imagery in their head and like find symbolism in it for what they want it to mean, you know, so sometimes it could be actually precog, but then sometimes it could be like, oh, well, it could mean this or this because I thought this mm-hmm. or that. So so number one, there must be a record or you must have told others about your dream before the dream scenario is fulfilled in real life. Oh, shit. Plain you simple. told us after, Mindy. No, I did, but I did have it in my dream journal, remember? It was oh, written down in, in my dream it, journal it was? a year earlier. So yes. I checked number one. I, che- I passed number that Number one. one, done. <laughs> Number two, the dream must have a significant number of unique details that it is unlikely to be fulfilled by chance. Ooh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So not that, you know, for example, I had a dream that not that just my niece was having a baby, but she was having a baby one year from that day, which was February 13th, which was the day she had her. Mm -hmm. Number three, any dreams that are self-fulfilling prophecies Mm -hmm. or that could be influenced by existing knowledge are not premonition dreams. So you can't yeah. be like, I'm going to be a famous singer someday and then work hard towards being a famous singer someday. Yeah, so I got that. Doesn't that count. Yeah. And number four, dream telepathy or communications with others via dream cannot influence the premonition of the dream. These are hard criteria to really meet. It's not scientific, like black or white. Yeah, right. You know, it's Exactly. But it's still fascinating. You have to have some sort of criteria, because then, and, you know yeah, what I mean? It's I like, mean, everyone oh, will have I one then. Oh, I knew that plane was going to crash <laughs> right? this week. I, I just knew, knew it, but it. you didn't tell anyone. So no. I like these criteria. I think that's I good. do, too. I mean, if you have to set criteria for such an objective or subjective thing that, yes, these are the ones I would choose. This is good criteria. Yep. So what are the possible explanations for precog dreams? The first one is called selective recall, and that says people recall confirmed premonition dreams significantly more frequently than disconfirmed dreams. I know that's a little confusing, so let me get into that a little bit. Okay. So in a 2014 study, there's this woman named Caroline Watt, and she's from um, Edinburgh, Scotland. Mm -hmm. 
she is a professor at the university and she has this whole i mean, i, I want to know this girl because i think this <laughs> i get, want did, to be inside her mind did you get into a rabbit hole with her studies this is not where i got well kind of <laughs> but not too big of a rabbit hole there's lots of rabbit holes always always she did up to 10 studies on dreams and Ooh. understanding psychoanalysis with dreams as well as precognition with dreams. Interesting. She also is trying to include the psychology of paranormal belief. So if you believe in the paranormal, are you more likely to have precognitive dreams? All right. So in one of her studies, she had 85 participants, 55 of which were female, 30 of which were male, and the median age was 23. Okay. So in this study, what she did is she had these participants read two journals. One was considered a dream journal. Mm -hmm. One was considered a journal of everyday real life events. Ooh, okay. Now, when the participants were trying to find whether there was correlations versus non-correlations, a significantly greater number of confirmed dream events were recalled than disconfirmed dream events. So Mm. say that I... In this dream journal, it says, I was walking on a beach, and I lost my shoe, and then there was a tornado, and then a, an angry spider came and bit my stomach. And then in the real-life journal, it said, I lost my shoe. Right. Okay? So one thing in that dream ended up to be true. And so the participants of the study were saying, yes, part of it was a precognitive dream, even though that was one in the five things that happened in the dream. Oh. So it's selective recall. It's remembering mm-hmm. what you want to dream because it did come true. Yes. Does that make sense? Then she did do a study on the paranormal to see if people who believed in paranormal were more likely to believe in <laughs> precognitive dreams or have them. Unfortunately, there was no correlations there, which I was kind of bummed oh, about. Yeah, so I'm super I think, bummed. I'm super I feel like they'd be one. connected, the sensitivity, you know? I think, yeah. You have to be open. Right. They also said people who have a tolerance for ambiguity more likely to have precognitive dreams. So if they see things as positive or desirable, they have more of a tolerance to experience such situation. And then the last one I want to talk about is subconscious connections. We always talked about how in dreams we process our memories and emotions from the day. Mm -hmm. And as a result, events that you experience during the day may stick to your subconscious. Mm -hmm. So let me throw this example out here. So, for example, you fall asleep and you have a dream that you're attending a concert of your favorite musical mm-hmm. artist. So, okay. Brooke, who, whose concert would you be attending? Oh, shit. I put you on the spot. I know. Just one. Pick it. Pick it, pick it, pick it. Bon Jovi. Okay. I figured that's what you'd go with. Okay. It's hard, though. But what about you? That's a hard... Ugh. Okay. So we'll go with the Bon Jovi. You fall asleep. You have a dream where you're attending a Bon Jovi concert. Ugh. I mean, you're front row rocking it now. You're Fuck just yeah. Ha- I'm... Hard eyes. <laughs> you are just tingly all over. Okay? <laughs> However, when you wake up, you see an ad that Bon Jovi's playing a concert nearby. Yeah. And you're like... Wow, I had a premonition dream about the Bon Jovi concert. Right. But in the, what the subconscious connections is saying is you've been thinking about this artist and listening to their music for days and days and days. So what you might not normally see as a correlation, your mind was already thinking about this concert. Right. It was already thinking about, oh, I know he's going on tour or, you know, he's, yeah. I've been listening to his music a lot. So when you have the dream, you might relay it to be a precog dream where it might actually so- be one. I mean, it's a lot of fun. I feel like you would wake up, like, say that happened to me. I'd be like, I'd go into work and I'd be like, you guys wouldn't believe that. I had front dropped. row tickets. Front row tickets. And then I woke up and the first thing I saw, I mean, I would be totally thinking like, oh, my God. that's so." It's, but it really is a coincidence as opposed to precog. Like, there's a right. big difference. But, you know, there's yeah, a great area your, your there, too. mine yeah. might have been thinking about it for weeks on end, you right. know, because exactly. you knew that it was coming or he, there were, he was in the media a lot because you know how if you have something to promote, you're on in the newspapers, you're on the TV, you're on radio, like you might have crossed that line and then it just subconsciously comes through in your dreams. You know, if you were standing there in the front row of the John Bon Jovi concert oh. and he's just dripping sweat on you. Mindy, hashtag. Oh, no. <laughs> what does John Bon Jovi dream? Oh, this is Brooke's favorite hashtag oh. of all time, I think. Mm, 
<laughs> but you know what? I already know the answer. It's me. He's just gonna. He's just gonna send me. You've said a that at least about ten people, Brooke. <laughs> you can't. You can't say everyone's dreaming about you. Oh, see, that's my dream. <laughs> my that dream. is your dream. Your so dream. when I finally meet these people, I'll say it's a precog. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> like I, they knew, they knew about me. Yeah, that's hilarious. Yes, let us know, Mister Mister Jovi, sir. Mister Jovi, uh, Bon Jovi. That'd be the correct. His bon- last name's, If you want to be super correct, it's actually Bon Jovi. Mister Bon Jovi, <laughs> please let us know what you've been dreaming about lately. Have you mm-hmm. any precognition dreams? Have you dreamt about Brooke? We want to know. We want to know. You know what's weird? Can I tell you something sidebar? Yes. I have had several Bon Jovi dreams. You have okay? now. This is weird. It's all coming back to me just now. Okay. Please. Every I know. I'm so excited because I'm remembering the dreams and how excited I was. Mm-hmm. So I've had probably, I know it should seem like more, but five very, very vivid dreams about mm. Bon Jovi. And I've always been going to a performance. Okay. Sometimes it's oh, very so small. So weird they picked this out as an this example. Is, this is very weird. Sometimes it's a very, like, just a small performance. Sometimes it's a big one. Is and it ever a solo performance? I wish, but oh, no. But tonight. every dream, I do meet him. Okay. Every dream... He remembers me, which is oh, weird. Like, it's like a continuation. Like, yeah. thanks for coming to that show. Like, he always mentions, like, oh, Brooke. Hi. Hi. Like, thanks so for coming to, to that. You. Yeah. Like, thanks for coming to that last show. Wow. Like, it always tracks to a previous performance. But it's like one time I threw a concert in the Target parking lot. Like, I arranged <laughs> this is a dream. This is a dream. But Bon Jovi was headlining, and, like, he brought me up, and he's like, I've known Brooke for so long. She's <laughs> been a fan, and she put this all together. Thank you so much. And I was just standing there like. <laughs> okay, so, Brooke, if you make it happen, because you've willed it, it doesn't count, remember. Um, so sorry. if it just happens by chance, maybe okay. it will be. <laughs> but interesting crossed. interesting okay well well now that we've got the definition of precognition dreams and yes. brooke's super big fantasy of hashtag <laughs> what does john bon jovi dream oh yeah let's talk about one of the most interesting historical mm. precognition dreams in u.s history i am so intrigued we're going way back way way back way back machine way 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 back way back machine two I, this is why you need to join our sleepover squad for yeah, extended for extended release of lyrics to that song and <laughs> dance moves. There's dance moves. There is. Okay. Well, we're going way, way back to Kentucky in 1809. Yeah, that is way, way back. Yeah, way back. Um, there's a little boy who was born whose name was Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> who? You might have heard of him, Mr. Lincoln, Mr. President Abraham Lincoln. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Now Which I know. is crazy because I was always the impression that he was born in my fine state of Illinois, but I he was not. So. He was born in Kentucky. I didn't know Should that either because it's like back. the land of Lincoln. Isn't that right? Well, and his, he didn't okay. live here until he turned 20 years old. So ah. I guess, you know, for a good part of his life, sure. Land but, of adult Lincoln should be the motto <laughs> of this slogan of the <laughs> the land of adult Lincoln is correct. That would be more <laughs> correct. Absolutely. You're spot on, Brooke. I try. So in 19... Nope. He was elected president in 1860. 1960. 1960. He was 51 years old when he was elected president. Oh, okay. By the way. That seems about an average age, I would think. Sure. I, I mean, unless why. you're these days, it's like 80. But Yeah. 95 years old. You're Let's elect. elect him. <laughs> now, you might have heard of the Lincoln bedroom in the White House. Mm, kind yeah. of famous. Very yeah. famous. Actually, Lincoln never really slept in there. Just what so you know. And also ch- another fun fact. What a chip. All these people that want to stay in the Lincoln bedroom. <laughs> nope. It was actually more like it had a bed in it. I think that like that fa- that bed that everyone knows about was yeah. bought by his wife, Mary Todd Lincoln, 
but it was more used as a cabinet room or as office. Mm, okay. But there were some celebrities that have stayed in that oh, yeah. Lincoln it's bedroom. Oh, yeah. It's hugely popular. So Bono Ooh, has actually stayed there. I believe it. I believe Bono's been there. Supposedly, it was after a fun night of strong cocktails with the Obamas. Oh. He claimed. He had to crash at the Lincoln bedroom. Yeah, you know, I'm going to go up to, I'm going up to Abe's room. I'll see you guys later. Night, Michelle. Um, <laughs> Bye, Sasha. Sweet dreams. <laughs> Sweet dreams, bitches, as he says to the, to the kids. But you have it, that like really sexy accent. When he right. Says it, though. Uh, uh, but there was some shady Airbnb stuff going on during the 1990s. I don't know what? if you remember the Wait. Clintons. Okay, this is a rabbit hole I didn't go down. I could have. I didn't. Because politics makes me anxious. Okay. There was a Lincoln bedroom for contributors controversy where the Clintons supposedly would allow people who donated very heavily to their campaign to stay in there. Okay. But yeah, I've heard that along. as well. Okay. I've heard that moving as well. <laughs> I don't want to get into politics on I know show, you so don't. Won't. I know you don't. <laughs> but going back to Abe's room. He had something very much in common with you. Me? Yeah, with you. Oh, God. He suffered from insomnia. Oh, the poor guy. It's yeah, poor guy. He was known as a light and often troubled sleeper. Guilty. Guilty. Yep. <laughs> now, he didn't sleep with his wife in the bed, which is totally common back then, so that's fine. But Plus, she was a little troublesome. She okay, had well. some um, brain health issues. Mm, yes. So I don't know if that had anything to do with it either, as opposed... I mean, it is was very common, but Mary Todd. Yeah. Mary, you know, you know, <laughs> you know MT. MT. <laughs> but the bed she bought for that room was a beautiful. And, you know, it's one of those historic, mm-hmm. you know, U.S. treasures that's still in the White House, I believe, or at least in the White House storage. This bed was nine foot long. Now, I understand, like, Lincoln was a tall dude. Not that tall. (laughs) Just for comparison, a king these days is about six and a half feet long. So what was his, did he wear his hat to bed and that added (laughs) some more length? A couple feet, you know, a couple feet. Well, he didn't sleep. He just laid there in his bed with his his hat on. With his hat on. So he needed a nine foot bed. (laughs) Even like the Cal- the California King's only seven feet. So this is like an abnormally long bed, by the way. And so the, obviously it is a custom bed frame Cus- then as it well. It was made in New York, I heard. Oh. The headboard was nine feet tall. So it's a nine, it's like a this nine a, foot tall by a nine foot long bed. You could stand bed. up in it. Huge. <laughs> That's the biggest. I could bed stand up. up in it almost twice. <laughs> <laughs> you could. It was carved walnut with a bunches of grapes and flying birds and bird nests. It was beautiful. You can see pictures online. But Mr. Lincoln was not a good sleeper. It was even said that his biographer, Carl Sandburg, said it was the one place he could escape politicians, though. So he went into the room. He would work. He could be alone. Yeah. But he'd always have to check under his bed to make sure that um, New York Senator Ira Harris wasn't hiding under it because he was very persistent. Did he really think someone would be hiding under the bed? Like, is that legit? I think he kind of is like a paranoid man. Wow. Well, if you don't have sleep, that can happen. Now, one of the things that you may not know about Lincoln is he was a big dreamer. Like, he dreamt a lot. And not only did he write in some of his journals, but he shared it with his closest friends, his wife and his secretary of state and his bodyguard. Like, he told people about his dreams it's like me i'd be like oh my god did you guys hear about the crazy dream i have last night so just think about lincoln in his top hat going like dude i had the craziest dream last night he's like trimming up his beard and he's just talking to mary todd he's like baby i had the craziest dream last night he's just like you won't believe it you won't believe it and just to put this in perspective because we just talked about freud not that long ago a couple Mm -hmm. episodes ago This was 40 years before Freud had the idea that dreams actually meant something. So he was kind of ahead of time. He actually thought his dreams meant something. Yeah, he was onto it. Way to go, Abe. (laughs) And it was documented in an 1863 letter that he mailed his wife about his youngest son, Tad. Did you know he had a son named Tad? I didn't, but I'm obsessed now. (laughs) Tad Lincoln. (laughs) He said to Mary, in, in a very short sentence... 
I think you better put Tad's pistol away. I had an ugly dream about it. Ooh. So just a few weeks earlier, he was he gave his son a gun. He was allowed to have a gun, you know, as long as it didn't have cartridges or powder. But a dream made him kind of be like, Mary, maybe we shouldn't give him this gun, which is kind of strange. Yeah, because he just gave it to him. Like he mm-hmm. wanted him to have it. He got a bad feeling from the stream. So okay, okay. I I'm in. <laughs> now the word you know as he said like he had an ugly dream about it. We don't really know what that may have mm-hmm. meant specifically. But I mean, if you can imagine, yeah, it wouldn't be a good. Gun, so enough yeah, to accident. say, let's take this gun away from my probably what like ten year old at the time. Yeah, good. Don't idea. give your ten year old a gun, Abe. No, let your That's children your buy their own guns. <laughs> So that may have been one precognitive dream that Lincoln had. We don't know, because maybe Mary Todd took the gun away from Tad. Yeah, and stopped it. Here's another one that I think is the most popular that you may or may not have heard about. Okay. President Lincoln dreamed of his own assassination. I've never heard this. No, I'm fascinated now. Okay. So now we're going all the way back to 1865. The Civil War was just... Coming to an end. So it was the time of the abolition of slavery. And he has this dream. And he, like again, has had several strange dreams, which he has recalled to his wife. Mm -hmm. And also to his friend and law partner, Ward Hill Lamont. That's a name. Now, (laughs) Ward. Ward. Good old Ward. (laughs) Now, Ward had written... In a biography that Lincoln spoke to him on April 11th, 1865, about a dream he had. Okay. And here is the direct quote from that book. Oh, God. This is going to be... According to Lincoln, this is what he said. Mm. About 10 days ago, I retired very late. I had been up waiting for important dispatches from the front. I could have not have been in bed long when I fell into a slumber, for I was weary, and I soon began to dream. There seemed to be a death-like stillness about me. Then I heard subdued sobs as if a number of people were weeping. Oh. I thought I left my bed and wandered downstairs. There the silence was broken by same the same pitiful sobbing, but the mourners were invisible. I went from room to room. No living person was in sight, but the same mournful sounds of distress met me as I passed along. Wow. It was light in all rooms, and every object was familiar to me. But where were all the people who were grieving as if their hearts would break? I was puzzled and alarmed. Yeah. What could be the meaning of all of this? Determined to find the cause of a state of things so mysterious and so shocking, I kept on until I arrived at the East Room, which I entered. There I met with a sickening surprise. Before me was a catafalque, on which rested a corpse wrapped in funeral vestments. Around it were stationed soldiers who were acting as guards, and there was a throng of people, some gazing mournfully upon the corpse, whose face was covered. Others were weeping pitifully. Who is dead in the White House, I demanded of one of the soldiers. The president was his answer. He was killed by an assassin. And then came a loud burst of... (laughs) Sorry. No, go ahead. No, I'm like, this is just... So fascinating to me. (laughs) Then came a loud burst of grief from the crowd. Mrs. Lincoln was shocked by the story. It was horrid. I wish I had not told you it. That's how Lincoln had recalled this dream to Ward Hill Lamont. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. And in this interaction, he told Lamont that his dream had him strangely annoyed ever since. Wow. And as we all know, on April 14th, 1865... Lincoln made a trip to the Ford Theater with his wife to attend the play, Our American Cousin. Mm -hmm. As it was recalled in his memoir by his bodyguard, William H. Crook, upon leaving the White House, Lincoln told me about having dreams for three straight days. And when leaving the White House, he bid him goodbye instead of this characteristic goodnight. Wow. The president and first lady, Mary Todd Lincoln, arrived late for the comedy but reported in good moods as they laughed heartily during the production. Then, Mm -hmm. as we all know, at 10.15, John Wilkes Booth, an actor and a Confederate sympathizer, slipped into the box 
and fired his 44 caliber pistol into the back of President Lincoln's head. Yeah. Wow. So Lincoln died at 7.22 a.m. the following morning on April 15th, 1865, at the age of 56 years old. Wow. So, Wow. But, oh. And to wrap it up, he was laid in state for viewing in the East Room as he was in his dream. So, let me ask you this. Okay. Did Lincoln dream his own fate? Oh, that's just too much to not be precog, right? Does I it, agree. I mean, I mean, let's, let, we can go let's go back to those four things. I was he gonna had say, told someone about it. Yeah. It was not a self-fulfilling prophecy. It's not something that he could have controlled. No. Yeah, what were the other criteria? Wasn't it like details or something like Oh yeah, to have very specific details. Um, a significant number of unique details Mm -hmm. that could not be fulfilled by chance. And there was no dream telepathy. So in my opinion, yes, I think that was check, check, check. A precognitive dream. Absolutely. Wow. So to wrap it up, the existence of predictive dreaming, we may never know what causes it. It's never been proven or disproven. Just like anything else we talk about in this podcast, we don't know the answer. (laughs) But maybe we can focus our research on those who claim to have precognitive dreams in order to get a better picture of who has them and why they are caused. I like it. So one of the most famous precognitive dreams in U.S. history was Lincoln dreaming of his own assassination. A biggie. Yeah, a biggie. (laughs) Yeah. Wow. That was fascinating. Thank you so much for sharing. Yeah, and I'm so surprised you've never heard of this. So I I'm, know. I'm super surprised. Wow. Can you imagine? Like, he's just like, it is, and the fact that he even mentioned like how much it had been bothering him. Yeah, but I mean, the, so like, specific, it's really like been bothering the me. East Room details, everything. I mean, mm-hmm. not just the assassination, but like the East Room detail where it was already after he was dead and he could see hear people crying hear or and see. It, but not see it right away it wasn't no until, like, but the not end right of the away dream. but yeah so but still yeah. Wow. Wow, wow, wow so was that you know the, the the not seeing those mourners was that the time that he was still alive from 10 to 7 a.m because that's was a that, long bit of time i didn't realize yeah. it was that long i mean i know he survived for a little while and was in the bed like what was it across the street but i didn't realize he survived what was what would that be? You said seven, eight, nine hours. Nine hours. After so is that shot? the wow. fact that like you know he could hear the mourners, but he couldn't see them, and then once he was laying in state in the East Room, he that could. he could see them. Oh, and he my asked who God, it was. My mind is blown. He and didn't they didn't know. in his dream. He did. They didn't say it was himself, but the God. fact that his face was covered, or the whoever was laying in state, the face was covered. Like that yeah. is completely eerie. Oh. And to ask, and they're Ooh. like, the president was assassinated. Not just that he had died, but like one of those details that were very specific. Mm-hmm. Assassinated. assassinated. Ooh, gives me chills. I love this story, Mindy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, that was amazing. Wow. Yeah. But that just opens a door to a lot more um, precognitive dreams that um, sure. I found, including plane crashes, 9-11, uh, landslides. So I've got a whole slew of uh, I can't wait. of dreams coming your way, bestie. Yay. Yay, yay, yay. Oh, great. I'm like at a loss of words. <laughs> <laughs> Moving along um, from assassinations to something maybe a little happier. Yeah. I saw your face this week. I saw your face a couple days ago. I was in town. I so nice. did in person. It was the most glorious face I've ever seen. <laughs> and, you, and you know what? You did give me... You gave me a gift, which was a, a best friend keychain. Oh my! So God. I've got half, and you've got half. I do. And they, you know, just like an old best friend necklace from middle school, they kind of like connect together. So yes. it is now on my keychain. I will always have it, treasure it. Thank you. You're welcome. And it's pink. And it's pink. Of course, it's pink. <laughs> you you did mention you were having some weird dreams lately, though. I have been having weird dreams, and I. But like only fake wake dreams, right? Fake wake dreams, yeah. Like, and I can only remember snippets, and they're all the same. Like, I had one with Mindy, not where I was having a text conversation with her, and then I woke up, but not really, but not really. <laughs> and I woke up in the morning. And I'm like, what were we talking about again? Or I had something funny to respond, and I checked my messages, and that whole conversation I wasn't did in not there. Happen, <laughs> and I've. 
it's been that's been the theme is like text messages where I wake so up and I like will have to go back and like did I talk about that or did I dream about so it? You're so you're dreaming just, of text messaging people that you aren't actually text, text messaging. messaging. Yes, that's crazy. Uh, and it's so real to me that when I wake up, I feel like it actually happened, and I check my messages and I'm like, oh shit, I never said any of that. This never happened. Like. <laughs> Good it could news. be good or bad. Yeah, depending. no, it was. It was. Good. It's been good news. It's been bad news. So I've been like happy sometimes when I wake up, and I'm like, oh, thank God that didn't happen. Or at the same time, I've had good ones too, where I'm like, ah, I hope that happens. That's awesome. Yeah, crazy, huh? How's life other than your crazy dreams lately? Oh my goodness, it's been it's a busy summer, but usually is. So things are good. I do have um. A little story about Mindy's new boyfriend, my cat Spooky. (laughs) She has broken up with Haddonfield because he's a bad boy, my other cat. Which, though, let me just plug, happy birthday, Haddonfield. It is his birthday today. Oh, happy birthday, Haddonfield. (laughs) He's number four. So Spooky, I've been taking my cats out on my front porch just to give them a little bit of outside time. Mm -hmm. Spooky's a big, white, fluffy, beautiful boy. He's like not, the most gorgeous cat yeah, you've ever seen. He is, really. Yep. He's not so much into the outside. He'll walk out and he'll just go back in he's on his own. Prince. Yeah, he's kind of fancy. <laughs> he is a prince. Baby gorgeous is what I call him. Uh-huh. <laughs> and he was outside the other day and he saw an ant and he decided to eat the ant. Oh. <laughs> and I don't know. I'm sorry for laughing at him, but I don't know if the ant... I'm sure he'll take offense. ...bit him, right? Or maybe <laughs> tasted really weird, or mean. maybe he just felt it move in his mouth. But he, like, as much as a cat can spit something out, it's more of, like... <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. he got rid of that ant and just sprinted inside. Like, it terrified him, <laughs> and he has Aww. not been outside since. Oh. I'm like, that's okay, buddy. You're too pretty to be outside anyway. <laughs> cute baby yeah that was my um poor spooky trying to eat an and, ant. and it's funny because my aunt visited and i got i got oh spooky my. talking to me so much i don't know what it is it must be something i saw my niece cecilia mm-hmm. my great niece cecilia and she was just like babbling at five months old blah 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 you know not really <laughs> making words but just like you know the cooing mm-hmm. and stuff and then i come over to your place and your cat spooky is just like i say hi spooky he's like meow like, yeah. how are you doing today? <laughs> Meow. And I'm like, hey, we're having everything. a conversation. Everything she said, he responded. I'm like, he never I don't talks know. to me. <laughs> I don't know what it is. I have like a, a baby cat whisperer uh, baby cat. vibe about it <laughs> You lately. do. That's good. We should see if you have it with other animals. Mm, what do we want to try next? Well, we should try a dog for sure. Well, but that's hard because I've got dogs, my dog. Yeah, that's true. Um, cow? Cow? We'll go to a farm. We'll see if a cow listens. We'll see if I can get a cow. And he's like, how are you today? Moo. <laughs> <laughs> what did you do last night? <laughs> moo, <laughs> moo, <laughs> Oh, <What>? no. <laughs> no. Whole conversation. <laughs> I think it's just you, Mindy. You must have like I don't know what the word is. Your the pitch in your voice, or maybe the is it timbre? What is it called? Like I don't know. Something. Like, there must be something that's very relaxing and soothing. Mm-hmm. But everyone doesn't like the sound of their own voice, so I don't like the sound of oh, my voice. No, but I do. So oh, everyone well, else like seems yours. to. <laughs> babies, Thanks, besties, for liking my voice and babies, besties, cats and besties. <laughs> yes, perfect. Mm-hmm. BCB. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> How have you been this week? I mean, yes, it was oh. great seeing you, but you've been busy. We have been busy. We were traveling back to Iowa for our youngest son's baseball tournament, which was fun. We got home. Um, right now I'm looking. So where my podcast setup is right now, I can see out our basement windows. And I have our vegetable garden like right in front of me. And so I'm looking at it. It's big. It's gorgeous. I'm so excited uh, we finally got our first cucumbers of the season. I love cucumbers. It's my favorite. You'll have yeah. to save one for me. Just one. Just, just one. Just one. I'm just going to You have to mail I'll it. I'll eat it like an apple. <laughs> <laughs> I will be a little bit of salt. Mm. They're actually made for pickling. So they're like, they got like the thin skins. They're perfect for pickling, which Mark likes to do. Our tomato plants, there's lots of, lots of tomatoes on it. So we're just waiting for them to turn red. I love tomatoes too. I've got kohlrabi. 
I've you got have radishes. Kohlrabi? Yeah. Radishes, um, carrots. Uh, we've had a lot of snow Kohl- peas. I'm sorry, kohlrabi? I've only known like one other person in my life to ever grow kohlrabi. It was my dad. Oh, yeah. yeah. I can't. Oh, I love it. You'll have to save me one of those, okay. too. Okay. One cucumber and one kohlrabi saved for Brooke. Yes, please. <laughs> but no, we've been have we our, our snow peas have been coming in like crazy. So we had we have to make something with it. So tonight we're making like a stir fry with some snow peas and I'm starving and I can't wait to eat it. <laughs> You're like, with so we got to wrap it up because yep. Mindy is starving. <laughs> I can't wait. Steak I have a lean cuisine calling my name. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> but it's a, one of the pasta ones. Their pasta ones are good. Well, just wait a couple days. You'll have a cucumber and a, and a what? kohlrabi. kohlrabi. I can't wait. <laughs> Yeah, oh so my, my, my news this week is I'm just excited about our garden. Nothing nothing too hey, exciting. Just uh, I'm excited about your garden too. Fo- I mean, we buy the seeds. Like The seeds are like so cheap. We get them from an heirloom seed supplier in Iowa. They mail oh, them to us. Wow, this is all this is like fancy. The, the best harvest I think we're going to have in a while. So um, I'll have to Ooh. put some pictures on social. Will you wear a farmer's hat? And oh, yeah. Overalls, mm-hmm. some sure. bibs, and yep. um, yeah. <laughs> show us your farming outfit. Yep, I'll go to the Goodwill and find me some overalls. I can't wait. <laughs> well, thanks, everyone, for joining us for another episode. Oh, yeah. And we need you to do us one favor before you take off, and that's to tell your best friend about the show. You can tell your bestie. You can tell your favorite snowboard instructor. Mm-hmm. You can tell your weed-sniffing federal agent about the show. <laughs> Or your favorite apple picker. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Yes, yes, of course. They have really long arms, though. Only if mm-hmm. they have long arms. Yep. That's how we grow is by sharing this podcast with one or two friends. That's how we keep coming back. Oh, heck, we're almost at 100 episodes. We're at oh. 90 next week. So, Oh, my God. You got Make sure you stay tuned for our yes. naughty 90 episode where we talk all things sexy and Ooh. things that are taboo. <laughs> I can't wait. It's going to be so much fun. Always fun. It's going to be a good one. I just want to thank Gina, our bestie, for sending us one of her fabulous dreams. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for always being open and honest with us. And we had some great fun cat naps today, too. So thank you, everyone, for submitting their dreams. All right. I'm going to go eat some stir fry. Brooke's going to have a lean's cuisine. I know. Don't be Jealous. Jealous. Jealous much? <laughs> all right, bestie. Until next week. And when we get all dirty and filthy. Oh, oh baby. <laughs> Sweet, Sweet dreams, dreams bitches. bitches.